Hey everybody, Mrs. T here. Happy April. So there are two things we celebrate in April. Well, there are lots of things we celebrate in April. April Fool's Day, birthdays, all that sort of thing. But there are two main things that we think about the whole month. Do you know what those two things are? One of them is poetry. So April is considered National Poetry Month. So we think a lot about poetry in April. The other one is autism. April is known as Autism Awareness Month. So I don't know if you know that word or not, autism. So autism is something that some people have and it's their brain works just a little bit differently. They perceive the world in a different way. Sometimes people with autism can talk, sometimes they can't talk. Sometimes they're more sensitive to sen certain sensations or certain lights or certain sounds. Um, sometimes they think in pictures instead of words. It's, um, it's, kind of, it's a spectrum, there's all different ways. So one person with autism could be very different than another person with autism. But because there are a lot of people who have autism, April is kind of a month that we dedicate to try, just trying to be aware of what it's like to have autism. So I found a book that rhymes, so there we go for the poetry part of the month, and it's also about a woman named Dr. Temple Grandin. So this is a real book, this is a biography, and she is someone who has autism. Um, this is a different biography we have in the library that this one's kind of too long for me to read right now, but you can see a photograph of her there on the cover. Her name is Temple Grandin. And she's one of the most famous animal scientists in this country. And the really cool thing about her is that because she has autism and her brain works differently, she was able to understand animals in a way that nobody had ever understood animals before. Um, so she speaks a lot about animals and she also speaks a lot about autism. Those are sort of two of the things that she's most famous for. So I'm gonna read you a picture book biography and it's called The Girl Who Thought in Pictures, The Story of Dr. Temple Grandin. And it's written by Julia Finley Mosca and illustrated by Daniel Riley. So there we go, The Girl Who Thought in Pictures. And that's a picture of kind of like what it feels like to have her brain. And, um, and I know that was kind of a very quick definition I gave of what autism is. So I'm gonna include some links on the library website this week that will, um, there's some, I think there's one Fancy Nancy, there's a couple of Sesame Street episodes, there's one PBS show, just a couple of like short videos that give even more information about what autism is like. So here we go. But this is the story of Dr. Temple Grandin. Here we go, I'm gonna move here so you can see all the pictures. If you've ever felt different, if you've ever been low, if you don't quite fit in, there's a name you should know. Temple Grandin's that name, in her tale you'll find glory. So get ready, get set, for this cowgirl's true story. So there, she's saying this book isn't just for you if you have autism or know someone who has autism. This book is just for anyone who's ever felt like they didn't fit in, which is kind of everyone, right? Everyone feels like that at some point. In the city of Boston, one hot summer day, a sweet baby was born. It was Temple, hooray! Unique from the start, an unusual girl. She loved spinning in circles and watching things twirl. But some things she hated, like certain loud sounds or bright, crowded places, large cities and towns. Frilly, itchy dresses with tags made her itch, pull, and tug. Something else that she hated? A big, squeezy hug. So she doesn't like loud sounds, and loud places, bright lights, and itchy clothes, and also hugs. Those are all things she doesn't like. A shy loner, this temple, but when she got mad, when her feelings of stress and frustration got bad, quite a tantrum she'd throw, kick, holler, bang, shriek. Yet still by age three, not one word did she speak. She didn't speak until she was three. She'll never be normal, was what some did say. Her brain's not quite right. 
You must send her away. Away? Not my temple, her mother proclaimed. We will figure this out. You should all be ashamed. So back when Temple was born, people understood a lot less than they do now about autism and about how to help people with autism. Then little by little, though sometimes she balked, special teachers helped Temple and one day she talked. And that thing with her brain, it was autism, see? She was different, not less. They all finally agreed. Like most kids her age, she loved ice cream and art. But the way Temple thought, that's what set her apart. If something was mentioned, for instance, a fly, in her mind she'd see dozens of photos fly by. There you go. So she thinks in pictures, not words. When the time came for school, let's just say that was hard. Kids taunted and chased her all over the yard. They picked on poor Temple. How crazy it drove her. They teased her for saying things over and over and over and over and over. So some people with autism can't talk and other people with autism might say something. They might um, speak about the same thing over and over again. Until finally she snapped. Yes, she did. Lost her cool. Threw a book at a kid and was kicked out of school. No one really got Temple. But well, then again, the truth of it was Temple didn't get them. You need time away, said her mom. That's what's best. You'll go visit your aunt on a ranch way out west. And guess what? Fitting in on a farm was less stress since the pigs didn't care if her hair was a mess. There she is thinking in pictures again. I like the way they show her brain in this picture, in this book. Quite a sweet spot she had for the cows in their herds. Such big gentle beasts who knew nothing of words. As she watched her new friends, a thought popped in her head. These cows think like me in pictures instead. So there she is. That's what she's thinking right now. And she's realizing that's how the cow thinks too. No humans had ever thought about that before. At a new school that fall, Temple found more support and a teacher who taught her. You'll never fall short when you find what you're good at, like science, you'll soar. And that teacher was right. He had opened a door. So she built a machine like she'd seen on some farms, an invention that hugged her with boards and not arms. It worked, she had done it from memory, it's true. And just like the cows, it made Temple calm too. So she'd seen this machine on a farm that was designed to help cows feel calm. Then she went home and she built one for herself and she found that hanging out there helped her feel calm. Sometimes maybe you feel calm when you get a hug from your mom or your dad or a friend maybe, and that wasn't what made her feel calm. So she had to figure out something different that made her feel calm. I'm special, she thought, like a bright shooting star. My attention to details could help me go far. Through her studies, she'd learned there were farms not so kind. I will help them, she said, some solutions she'd find. So when she grew up, she started studying farms and she realized that farms didn't always treat animals well because they weren't thinking about how cows were thinking. But she spent a lot of time thinking about how cows thought and she thought she could help make farms a better place for animals. And then something cool can you guess, could it be? Off to college she went, a degree, she earned three. And
And the ladies weren't experts on farms at that time. Do you think that stopped Temple? No way. She did fine. She stepped through that door and went forward. No tears. She took on the world. But at times she had fears because some things were scary, like people she'd meet who ignored her ideas and wouldn't be sweet. So she kind of had two things going against her. First of all, she was a girl and people back then didn't think that girls should be working on farms and learning about animal science. And then number two, she had autism and people didn't quite understand the way that she talked or the way her brain worked. But she never gave up, learned her stuff through and through. Like, like why cattle will circle and what makes them moo. To build better farms was her goal. She would do it. Be kind to our creatures. They have feelings. She knew it. So no one had ever thought to study why cows move in circles or why cows moo. So she studied them. She was the first person. And slowly but surely, she changed many minds until farm after farm built her awesome designs. Word spread about Temple, her feet's not so small. Temple grand and she's grand. She's the grandest of all. So one of the things she figured out is that cows like to move in circles. So she built ways for them to move that would make them feel calmer. Now for these things and more, she's won honors and prizes. And a movie was made about her. But the biggest surprise is that girl with the future that couldn't be bleaker. Yes, the once silent girl she is now a big speaker. Today she spreads hope with her stories and speeches from New York to Sydney to Rome, Temple teaches. Each person is special, so unique are our minds. The world needs your ideas. It takes brains of all kinds. And if you look at the videos I posted, there's one video of her speaking where you can hear what she sounds like. So here is the lesson. Feeling odd or offbeat? Being different might just be what makes you neat. Don't let doubt hold you back, not for one minute more. Stand tall and like temple, march right through that door. And there's a picture of temple with a cow she worked with. And here's a letter from temple. It says, dear reader, as a child, I was really glad that my mother always encouraged my ability in art. I encourage you to find something you are good at and work on developing it. If you are interested in becoming a scientist like me, find cool new ways to look at things, such as microscopes and telescopes. Explore nature. Think up your own hands-on science experiments. Keep learning, especially from your mistakes. Temple Grandin. And there we go. That's the girl who thought in pictures, the story of Dr. Temple Grandin. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about some of her inventions, you should definitely look her up online. There's a movie about her that's really good. And there's lots of videos you can find on YouTube. And some of the machines and inventions and things she did to change the way that farms do business, it's really, it's really cool what she did. And she kind of changed the way that we think of animals. So that's Temple Grandin the girl who thought in pictures. I hope you liked the book.